Welcome to our slidecast on how to select and rate the importance of outcomes that are relevant for the recommendations of clinical practice guidelines. Within the grade process, guideline developers must select all potential patient important outcomes as one of the first steps in their endeavor. This slidecast has two objectives. First, it will discuss how guideline developers can select a list of outcomes that are relevant for decision making. Second, it will describe how the relative importance of outcomes can be determined. To understand why weighing of outcomes is important, let's consider an example. At age 27, when Charles Darwin returned from his adventure on the HMS Beagle, he thought it was time to settle down. His cousin, Emma Wedgwood, seemed like the perfect catch. Nevertheless, he was plagued by doubt. And so, Charles Darwin did what many of us do. He drew a list of advantages and disadvantages. In his case, he drew a list of advantages and disadvantages of getting married. Charles Darwin thought that marriage can have clear disadvantages. It might be a loss of time. One cannot read in the evenings anymore. Marriage means responsibility, which can cause anxiety. Maybe the wife will quarrel a lot. Perhaps she won't like life in London. But he was also concerned that he would like marriage too much and might become an idle and indolent fool. But marriage, of course, also has many advantages. One has a constant companion. There is someone who would take care of the house. Maybe marriage will produce children. And Charles Darwin also thought that it is just intolerable to spend life like a neuter bee, just working and working. Following Darwin's example about desirable and undesirable consequences of marriage, guideline developers need to start out with a list of outcomes that are relevant for practice. Why is it important to think about outcomes at the beginning of guideline development? Because every medical decision comes with desirable and undesirable consequences. Desirable outcomes are, for example, beneficial effects of an intervention or better quality of life, and many others. Undesirable outcomes involve adverse effects, discontinuation of intervention, cost of treatment, and many others. Guideline developers always have to make sure that they can consider both desirable and undesirable outcomes. So, guideline panels have to deal with the question of what desirable and undesirable outcomes are and how important they are for decision making. The first step is to start with a list of outcomes that seem relevant for practice. Outcomes can come from research articles, clinicians, patients, or stakeholders. The list can be long, but it should include outcomes that reflect benefits and harms of interventions. When selecting outcomes, an important point to consider is that outcomes should be practice-driven, not evidence-driven, which means that any outcome that is relevant for practice should be included on the list, even if experts suspect that no or little research evidence is available for these outcomes. For example, in this position paper on mammography screening, experts in the field and women selected many outcomes. Actually, more than can be dealt with during a guideline development process. So how can guideline panels deal with a multitude of potentially relevant outcomes? Not all outcomes are equally important for decision making, but how should a guideline panel select them and how many can they handle? Grade recommends to rate the relative importance of outcomes on a nine-point Likert scale. Outcomes should be classified as critical, important, and not important. Outcomes rated between seven and nine are critical for decision-making. They determine the overall certainty of evidence and the direction and strength of a recommendation. Outcomes rated between four and six are considered important, but not critical to the decision regarding an intervention and outcomes rated as 1 to 3 are considered irrelevant or of limited importance for decision-making and guideline development. And who should rate outcomes? Not only the guideline panel, 
but ideally also patients and other stakeholders should be involved. They should rate the relative importance of the selected outcomes. Relative importance refers to the importance of selected outcomes compared with one another. It should not be an absolute importance where mortality might be always on top of the list. Grade recommends the inclusion of no more than seven outcomes, including both benefits and harms. This number is mainly based on experience about the amount information panels can deal with. In the example from the WHO position statement on mammography screening, the panel rated only breast cancer-specific mortality as critical. Six additional important outcomes on benefits and harms were used for the development of recommendations. But there's one additional aspect that needs to be taken into consideration when rating the importance of outcomes. And this is the variability of answers of those who rate it. For example, in our WHO example, panel members consistently rated breast cancer-specific mortality as a critical outcome. For overall mortality, however, the variability of ratings was much greater with answers ranging from 1 to 9. In such a case, discussion with the panel and maybe a second round of rating is necessary. Such outcome ratings can be done easily with an online electronic survey. Outcomes that show high variability of answers should be discussed with the guideline panel and stakeholder. To achieve a better consistency of individual ratings, a modified Delphi process can be very helpful. After the first round of ratings, the mean or median rating for each outcome is calculated and reported back to those who participated in the ratings. With the results of the first round of ratings in mind, the guideline panel is asked to rate the outcomes again. At the end, panel members need to agree on the chosen outcomes and the final ratings. The evidence on these outcomes will be summarized in systematic reviews and used for the grade process. If you want to learn more about grade, watch our slidecast on that topic. Coming back to Charles Darwin, the happy news is that, after weighing advantages and disadvantages of marriage, he decided to propose to Emma. Emma accepted, and they lived happily ever after and had 10 children. This slidecast was produced by Cochrane Austria at Danube University Krems.